Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Nuggets News. Today I'm going to discuss the bearish case for Bitcoin. As you guys know, I'm an uber bull, we're often discussing everything that's great about this technology, but as investors we should at least investigate the other side of the coin and look at some of these counter arguments that are often presented in the mainstream and so on. Now recently I did my uber bull case about if we get a crazy bubble again and people haven't learned their lessons. I think the truth is probably somewhere in the middle, but it's important to explore these bearish arguments. And again, feel free to counter them all in the comments below. I don't necessarily prescribe to these arguments, but these are the ones that are often thrown up. So the first one is that we're not getting scaling fast enough. And if we had another bull run, it would be the same as in December 2017, we'd see $20, $50 fees on the Bitcoin network. Now that's a possibility. SegWit adoption is at about 40 or 50% for the entire network. So that's still got a lot of room to further um, improve the capacity of the network. And we've seen fees um, stay really low, even though the number of transactions just passed that record high. So Bitcoin is definitely becoming more efficient. Um, one of the next major upgrades, Snore signatures, should again improve that efficiency by 20 or 30%. And I'm not going to go into the arguments about whether or not we should just increase the block size straight away, but the thought process is from the main Bitcoin developers that we should make everything as efficient as possible before we go just in increasing that block size. So if fees get really high and the network gets really slow and clunky and there's plenty of other good options out there, most uh, wallets are multi-coin these days. So again, that would not work in Bitcoin's favor if the network gets super congested. The next thing to discuss is hacks. And in the past, you know, Bitfinex, uh, was one of the worst ever hacks, Mt. Gox. These things were pretty devastating at the time. And we haven't seen any of the big mainstream exchanges get hacked. So if something like Coinbase or Binance was to get hacked and it was a substantial amount of money, that truly would be devastating and a lot of people would lose confidence. Or if one of the hardware wallet providers, we've seen a few bugs recently, but if everyone with their ledger or their trezor was to find out that their crypto is no longer safe, and that is really the safest method a lot of people are claiming, I think that would be devastating. So that's something that we would not like to happen. Exchange insolvency is the next one. So recently we saw the proof of keys event where you are encouraged to withdraw your Bitcoin off an exchange in case these exchanges are running fractional reserves or they've been hacked and they haven't told anyone. Now, I fell victim to this in the past, back in the very early years. Um, there wasn't even hardware wallets back in the day. And unfortunately, the exchange got hacked, didn't tell anyone, and then it became clear over time that they were insolvent and that cost me you know, a lot of Bitcoins. So exchange insolvencies would be something that, again, it's not good, it's not what we want. The bigger the exchange, if that was to happen to Coinbase or Binance, and I'm not suggesting this is true at all, but if that was to come out that they were insolvent, then again, that would be something that's pretty devastating for the crypto space. The next one is government crackdown. And different countries have already cracked down on crypto in different capacities. And some are really cracking down on privacy coins, for example. But if all the, particularly the G20 nations got together and said, um, you know, for whatever reasons, crypto is bad, and they get to put all those usual reasons forward that we know. And this could lead to something, you know, conspiracy theory had on, like a false flag attack or you know, the mainstream media really pushing a narrative that there's so much tax evasion and it's been used to fund terrorism and all that usual sort of stuff. The other thing that the mainstream are going to get at is if we have the next downturn, we've already seen negative interest rates in some countries. If that becomes more widespread where, you know, a dozen of the G20 nations have negative interest rates, they're going to have to move towards this cashless society or you know, look to ban cash or penalize cash in some way. And if crypto is another option for you to avoid their system, which is currently tracking with negative interest rates, they're not going to let you have that option. So I think that's where crypto is going to be a real battleground um, going forward if we have that downturn and we get negative interest rates in more countries. The next thing to talk about is gold and silver. And a lot of us got into this space, myself included. I still own some gold and silver. I think it is sound money. It's stood the test of time. And a lot of people think that it's been suppressed or maintained so that it doesn't, you know, it's not a canary in the coal mine about how much money has been printed. Now, if gold and silver was to break, um, you know, that suppression that it has, we hear about the 100 to 1 
paper claims and the COMAX, if all that system breaks and we find out that there's not enough physical to meet all this demand and speculation on Wall Street, then gold and silver could go on a massive run and that would be really exciting. We'd all be trading those stocks. Um, and again, that is something where conspiracy theorists say that maybe even you know the powers that be will let gold and silver run pretty hard because they can control that more than the crypto, which is completely out of their control. So again, this is some pretty um, interesting arguments I'd love to explore more in the future. And if that area becomes exciting, we also have the possibility of other sectors. You know, we've seen the cannabis stocks, um, artificial intelligence. There's so many other sectors that can really boom and get that excitement and hype. But uh, again, I think crypto is pretty big and it has a great chance of um, having uh, more market cycles in the future. There's so many people working on blockchain technology projects. The next one is the stock market crash. And people often ask me, how would crypto Bitcoin react in a stock market crash? Now, if we have a really sharp black swan event, a big market crash, there's going to be a scramble for liquidity, the same as 2008 when we saw gold and silver sell off. Now, if people are scrambling to get any sort of money and flight to safety, a lot of people, particularly any of the Wall Street investment products, if we have more of them in the future, they're going to sell off. Everything is so highly correlated when those algorithms and bots get going, when they need to top up your account with money to pay other um, you know, liquidity calls and, and flash crashes and all this stuff is happening, it's going to sell off. Now, if we have a sort of slow decline and there's money printing and central banks are having all their confidence lost by the people, in that sort of scenario, it's a slower grind and more people are saying, hold on, they're debasing our currency. That's when we could see a slow increase and more and more people going into Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. So it kind of depends what the crash looks like, what the cause is, how cryptocurrencies react in that scenario. The next one is a further deeper correction. So if Bitcoin was to go down 90 or 95% and go on for two or three years, you'd have to say that that would kill sentiment, guys. Particularly, it's we love volatility as traders, but if it was just a sideways, slow grind lower, there wasn't trading, there would just be no excitement in that space anymore. So that would be a really bad scenario. But again, I don't see that as likely Bitcoin going 90%. But who knows? It's you know it's gone down 80, 85% already, but there's still a lot of volatility and trading opportunities and people are still very excited about trading Bitcoin at the moment. The next one is privacy. And you guys know I've done a video called The Biggest Headwind That No One Is Talking About For Bitcoin And Ethereum. And that is that they both plan to implement privacy either on the main chain or on second layer. So you can use the coins in a private manner. Now, going back to that government thesis before, they're probably not going to like that. And it depends how well established Bitcoin is in the mainstream, whether or not um, that requires a hard fork, for example, and Andreas has done some talks about this. At that stage, would all the Wall Street and government um, Bitcoin derivatives and instruments say, we're not going to go down that path, that hard fork of privacy. We don't want this to be private. And that's, again, when we could see a real um, battle heat up on social media about the importance of privacy. And it's something that governments are slowly stripping away um, our privacy, obviously. So that is probably one of the biggest battles I see coming for Bitcoin in the next 12 to 24 months. Again, I don't think enough people are talking about this at the moment. The next one is hash rate and mining. Now, obviously, we hear all these theories about how wasteful Bitcoin is and how much energy it consumes. I think Bitcoin is actually pushing the renewable energy narrative more than any other industry. And it often uses base load electricity that would otherwise go to waste. So I think those stories are blown out of proportion. But if Bitcoin keeps using more and more energy, you're going to read these headlines about all the countries that it's using more energy than and how wasteful it is. The flip side of that is if we have a decline in price and hash rate continues to drop, there's less and less miners that are profitable. I've done videos on this. Bitcoin is always going to adjust and there's always going to be some miners that are profitable. It will always reach an equilibrium. But if it drops really sharply and that equilibrium takes a long time, and even though we have the difficulty adjustments every two weeks or so. If hash rate was to drop a lot, it could take even longer than that between each adjustment and that's when transactions would become really slow. Who knows how unsecure the network would be. But again, guys, I'm just sharing these ideas and thoughts. I don't think that any of this is really likely to happen. So that's my sort of top 10 or so points about the bearish case and things to be aware of. 
What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Are none of those things likely to happen? Do you think some of them are likely to happen? I'm really looking forward to reading your comments. I hope you've enjoyed the bearish thesis um, and it's important to understand the other side of the coin. Thanks for tuning in.